I need to ask you to turn with me this morning in your Bible. Lord, don't let me miss you because I don't want to do anything that would take away from what we've already felt. But I've got to, I wondered why, Lord, why do you want me to, why do you want me to bring this scripture? It just really doesn't seem to fit with what's been going on. But I prepared, I got it ready anyway, and then he does all things well. <laughs> because what we've just experienced, I believe, leads me right here to Hebrews uh, chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter number 2. I want to share this verse with you. In Hebrews chapter number 2, the very first verse says, Therefore, can I tell you a little something? I'm going to do a little teaching right here. Anytime in your Bible when you see that word, therefore, back up. And I don't have time to do it right now, but therefore means what I'm about to say is related to, to what I just said in the verses before this. So he's tying this in with what he's just taught them. He says, therefore, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. This is a strong warning to all of us this morning. Uh, let me read it to you from a, a different uh, translation. We must, therefore, pay even more attention to what we have heard so we do not drift away. Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. Uh, I don't want to bore you with facts and figures or with statistics, but can I just tell you this morning uh, that, uh, uh, that more and more and more of our I can't speak about anybody else, but I, I am Assembly of God. I always have been. Thank the Lord for uh, the fact that they have recognized God's ordination upon my ministry, and, and I carry my credentials with them. Uh, but I will tell you that more and more and more of our Assembly of God folks who are gathered at Assembly of God churches all across the country today do not identify with the Pentecostalism of our founders. They don't want to hear, they don't want to see it. If, if anybody starts to manifest the Spirit, they move them out into someplace else. They don't want to interrupt the, 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 the orderly flow of the service. We were founded on God moving and having His way. Well, before we would rise up in judgment against those who don't preach about tongues and they don't preach about those things anymore and they don't talk about the gifts of the spirit and, and they don't you know th they don't have that as part of their service anymore and, and uh, if somebody had a message in tongues and an interpretation they need to come to me first and, and make sure that it's okay to give it uh, you know uh, that's that's going on in, in our churches oh yeah that, that that's going on in our churches we we what I want to tell you is what God has given us, the spirit that we have felt here this morning, we need to take heed. We need to take heed of, of the experience that we have in Pentecost, uh, that we not let it slip, that we not let it slip, that we not drift away from it. You see, this, I, I sang a chorus earlier about a river of life. You know what's true about all rivers from the, from the, from the Nile or the Amazon to, to the Saline River? What's true about all of them is is they're moving. There's constant flow in a river. There's a current. There's a movement. And a vessel that is on the river is never just setting still. If it's setting still, it's having to work to maintain its position that appears to be sitting still. There's work that's going on there to be done to keep that position because left alone, it's going to drift, and it never drifts upstream. Yeah, always. Oh, pastor, who are you talking to, kindergarten? It always drifts downhill. If we don't pay earnest attention to the things that God has delivered to us, our salvation, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the gifts of a Spirit-filled church, if we don't pay heed to them, if we don't earnestly pay attention to the fire of God that is burning in our hearts and lives, that flame will go out. We will begin to drift, and we will drift downstream to the same godless kind of religion that many other churches are embracing embracing today and have moved downhill. You want a case in point? The, the Methodist church was the herald of Pentecostalism in the colonies and in America, but the Methodist church is not a Pentecostal movement anymore. 
what happened? They began to drift, and that drift has taken them further and further away from the things that the Wesleys founded Methodism on. If we let it slip in our generation, we will be as they are now. I'm not here today to condemn anybody, but I am here today to warn you, church, uh, that we've got to be careful that we not let it slip. I can't do anything about what they do in Springfield uh, up there, our executives, but I can do something about what happens right here. And I can certainly do something about what's going on in here and in here. And I'm challenging you this morning. The things you've heard this preacher and others preach to you, hold on to them. Stand up on them. Continue to believe them because the world's going to tell you they're old-fashioned, they're out of date, they're bigoted, they're hateful, they're, despited, uh, they're, they're, they're despiteful, uh, they're, they're they're, they're harsh. They're, they need to be done away with. You hold on uh, to the truth of God's word. If he says it, you better believe it. Uh, and I don't care who gets up behind a microphone. I was disappointed to hear this week about a man that I think is a, is a man of God. He has a, a great ministry, a great anointing. I used to try to want to preach like him when I was younger. Uh, and I heard him say that his position uh, on certain things that are prominent in our world today is changing and evolving. Brother, the Word of God doesn't change and it doesn't evolve. And if God says it's a sin, it's a sin. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. And if you're changing and you're evolving, you're slipping. You're slipping. You're drifting away. The change and the evolution that needs to come place is that you understand and apply and live by more and more of this book and less and less of what the world wants to teach. But, what, oh, Lord, I just, you know, I, I want to tell you, whether you're willing to admit it or not, even if you've received the gift of the Holy Ghost and have spoken in tongues, there'll come a time in your life, and some of you may be there right now, where you have a tendency to put your soul in neutral. Yet all through the Scripture, there are warnings about that kind of action because it'll cause you to go with the drift of the flesh or the drift of the world. If you shift that drive, that, 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 that drive that you had when you first got saved, when you first received the Holy Ghost, to go after God, to read the Word, to pray, to, uh, to, to, to be around Christian people, and, and you just say, well, you know, I've learned enough, I, I, I've, I've matured enough, I've gotten to the point where, where I don't have to go so hard after God, I, I'll just push in the clutch and, and shift into neutral and just kind of coast a while. Uh, you'll find that where you coast is to the flesh and to the world. You'll drift away from the things of God, you've got to take up that cross daily and follow Jesus. I don't know why I've got such a hard word. Y'all know I don't normally preach like this, but the Lord says you've got to warn folks that the writer of Hebrews is saying, don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. I want to tell you every day there are instances where we can let things slip in our life. But life is surrounding us with examples of of where men are desperately trying to keep things from slipping away. Well, what do you mean? You drive around town, you'll see a Wells Fargo truck or a Loomis truck. <laughs> they're trying to not let something slip away, right? That's loaded up with somebody else's money, and they've got guys with body armor and, uh, and automatic weapons that are going to try to keep something from slipping away from them, right? Uh, the quality uh, control inspector at the factory who examines the parts that are going down the assembly line, he's trying to make sure that the product that, that goes out the door I I is, not s is not slipping, but it, it maintains the standards. If you've ever worked in factory work, you know what I'm talking about. There's a, a quality control guy that's going to come around and, and check the parts every once in a while. These law enforcement aid uh, officers that drive up and down this road, I don't know if y'all have any law enforcement anywhere else in the county or not, but on Airport Road, we got, the, we got the police over here now. I hear them all the time. They're up and down this road all the time, the state police and the county uh, officers, and I thank God for them, and I pray for them when I hear their sirens going up and down the road. There's security devices on your car and on your home and on your, your buildings uh, that maintain and that monitor. Do you want to go uh, to the airport in Little Rock and catch a flight to Chicago or Los Angeles or somewhere today, and they're going to screen you and try to make sure that nothing slips 
past them uh, that would be dangerous. Uh, church, uh, can I just tell you that the devil is doing everything that he can do to slip some things into the body of Christ uh, that will bring harm uh, to this body, to the body of Jesus. It's okay. That doesn't matter. You don't have to be so holy. You don't have to live so straight. Uh, you, can, you can take a little of this and do a little of that. Be careful that you not let these things slip. Uh, he goes on in, in, in Hebrews chapter number 2 to say, How else are we going to be saved if we neglect so great a, a salvation? The writer of Hebrews, in other words, is saying there is no other hope. There's no other way. And if we let this salvation slip away from us, where are we going to go next? There is no other church. There is no other way. There is no other name. And if we allow the testimony of Jesus to be besmirched by our actions, by our attitudes, by our carelessness, what other name is there that's going to save these folks? There is no other name. Who else is going to testify to them if you don't? Who's going to go in and repair the damage that you have caused to the body of Christ if you let things slip in your life? Don't look at me like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Back in the 80s, uh, 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 Brother Swaggart had a great thing going in South and Central America, Latin America child care. He was building schools and orphanages all over one man in his ministry. There was some awesome things going on. Those of you that are old enough to remember know what I'm talking about. When his ministry ran on a ran aground, there was nobody positioned. There was nobody to be able to pick up the pieces of Latin America child care. The Assemblies of God began trying to send dozens of missionaries dozens to try to go in and save those orphanages and schools and places from closing and going under why am i talking about that that's a, that that's you know 30 years ago why am i talking about all that i'm trying to tell you the danger of letting something slip in your life and of not watching because so much damage can occur from one child of God that just lets the boat slip, just lets it slip and lets it run aground that dozens of other well-meaning, God-fearing missionaries are going to have a hard time repairing the work because... Are y'all tracking with me? Do you understand? It's so very important how you represent Jesus Christ when you walk out of here. It's so very important how you hold on to the things that you've been taught and that you believe when you walk out of here. Because that one moment, they can act like fools. They can tear things up and have temper tantrums and fits and, and act like uh, fools that, that, you know, that they are. But you, child of God, cannot afford one time to go out and act like a child of darkness. You can't afford one time to go out and, and act like a, a fool. You must be wise in the Word of God and hold on because that one moment, that one moment, souls could be lost in that one moment where you just, you know, we joke about it. We joke about it. I told you hearing that guy say, I'm going to have to lay down my Holy Ghost. And we joke about it. You can't, you can't let that happen in your life. It, it's so much easier to avoid laying the Holy Ghost down and acting a fool than it is to ever go back and try to repair the damage. I got to quit uh, because I don't mean to beat up the sheep this morning. Life's, life pours through the hourglass that you've been allotted. You know what I mean? How quickly. It's already the end of February. Yesterday was Christmas, wasn't it? You know, here it is, the end of February. I've had 45 trips around the sun. Where did they go? Life goes by so fast. Don't let it slip. Stop drifting with your life. God has a greater purpose for you than what you have experienced so far. God has a greater purpose. You may have let things slip in 2016. Maybe you've let things slip in your life so far in 2017. Can I tell you, when the Lord gave me that hard scripture and, and said, warn them, warn them about letting things slip, he said, the reason why I want you to warn them is because I've got a bigger purpose for their life. 
I've got a bigger purpose and a bigger plan. Your past may be filled with some junk. You may have some stuff back there, I do, that you're not very proud of, that you hope nobody ever hears about, that you never have to tell it. It's under the blood and it's gone and you don't want to be reminded of it. And it's embarrassing that it's back there. God says you have a greater plan in your future and your past has not train wrecked your future. I've got a purpose for you. I've got a plan for you. You hold on to what you've been given right now. You hold on to those things that have been spoken on to you, spoken into you. You hold on to the truths that have been revealed in your life, and we've got bigger things coming. You've got bigger things coming. Uh, so what do you need to pay attention to? What do you need to pay earnest attention to? As I read to you in that scripture, what do we need to pay close attention to so that your life doesn't just slip past, so that your spiritual power and authority doesn't just slip past, so that your Folks, I'm not talking this morning uh, about your personal salvation, okay? What I'm talking about is your testimony. I'm talking about the anointing of God on your life. I'm talking about the power of God in you, working through you. That's what I'm saying. Let's not let this slip away. Let's not let this. There's. I've been there. I've tried to preach in some of these places that it's just as dead as a doorknob. You know, and you try to get somebody excited, and, and they've already let that all slip. <laughs> they've already let that slip away somewhere back there, and, and they're still going to church because they know they need to be there. They may be still saved. That's between them and the Lord. But what I'm talking about is that life, that power, that excitement, that anointing. It's gone. Might as well write Ichabod. <laughs> I've visited some places. I've tried to preach in some of those places, and I think I may have pastored one of those. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is this. What is it that you need to pay heed of in your life? What promises have been spoken over you? What has God said to you? What are your dreams? What's going on in your life? Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. Speak to those bones. Man, I'm just amazed at how well God draws all things together. He started with a worship service, went through that message in tongues and the interpretation here it is now that I'm wrapping things up, saying, don't let it slip away, church. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. You know what I'm holding on to? Can I just tell you? I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> when I came here in November of 2012, the first three messages that I preached to you were all on the subject of changing seasons. I preached to you about breaking up the fallow ground. And I preached to you about the changing of seasons. And I'm holding on to that. You see, we went through a season when I first came here where there was some, there was some harvest. We, we, we added that first year, we added quite a few new members to the church. A and then the season changed, and, and we've, had some, we've had way too many that have gone on to glory. We, we've had way too many things where we, we kind of went through the, the fall season, right? The harvest was over and, 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 and things, you know, there was some pruning and some things taking place. But I'm holding on to the promise of God that talked about breaking up that fallow ground and getting into a new season because God has spoken to me too many times about revival and about renewal and about uh, greater things than what you're seeing. And so I'm holding on to that. Do you, do, do you see it? Do you see it? Oh, I believe I'm seeing just like my blueberry bushes, uh, blueberry bushes starting to put on new leaves in the backyard right now, I believe I'm seeing some leaves start to come through in our church. I, I believe I'm seeing some new life start to come through and start to happen, and I'm holding on, and I'm believing, you know, I'm believing that time for our turnaround has, 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 arriven, has arrived. <laughs> Sometimes if I don't know the word, I'll just make up one, you know, because it helps me to go on. So... <laughs> We're in Arkansas, right? So it don't really matter. It's all right. It'll be okay. <laughs> what, are you hold, what are you holding on to from God? Is it seeing your kids in church and saved and serving God? Is it a, a new job, a better job? Is it, uh, is it a healing in your body? Uh, you know, what is it that you're holding on for? Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip away. God has greater plans for us. God has greater plans for us because of the anointing. God has greater plans. Will you